Hi everybody, so trainer tip Thursday. Today we're gonna go over quad dominance and then next week we're gonna go over glute dominance. So quad dominance is pretty much whenever you're doing a lower body exercise, you feel it more in your quads than in anywhere else in your body because they just wanna take over as a large muscle group. Um, a lot of times it's because you're tight in other places. Um, is it a bad thing necessarily? Um, I'm also a quad dominant person, so I have to work very hard to make sure that I am making my body equal um, so that I'm not just growing real, real tree trunk thighs. Um, <laughs> so in order to do that, what that means is that you probably have tight hip flexors, you probably have tight hamstrings, and you have underactive glutes, so they're just weak. Uh, they may also be tight and weak. Uh, so you may need to roll out, stretch, and strengthen um, in order to correctly balance yourself. Um, so in order to kind of correct your quad dominance or at least to work on it so it's not as dominant and you can really make sure that you're feeling exercises where you're supposed to be feeling them, um, some things you can do are some glute bridges, which we've done in class before. Those can be on the ground. They can be elevated on the basin of the bag. They can also be elevated on a wall, really focusing on squeezing through the glutes and not squeezing through the quads. Like, uh, unless you're a lower body exercise specifically targets quads, such as like a wall sit, obviously you are going to feel those in your quads because it's a quad exercise. Normally, if I've taught classes, um, You've probably heard me say, you should feel this in your, so say we're doing an RDL, I'm like, we should be feeling this in glutes, hamstrings, and low back, but if you're feeling it mainly in your low back, let me know, because that's not the main event. That's the same thing for quads, unless it is a quad strengthening exercise. Um, so another glute strengthener that you can do is donkey kicks, you can do clamshells, fire hydrants. Um, when doing squats, you want to focus on, so normally you'll hear me say feet under hips. If you have any hip or knee issues, then go a little bit wider toes turned out. That also wider stance and also includes sumo squats, sumo deadlifts. Um, that is going to target more of that posterior chain. So it's going to target your hamstrings and your glutes more than your quads will. Something with that as well. Normally, it's fine if your knees go over your ankles as long as they're tracking straight. Um, however, in this instance, you would want to keep your knees above your ankles and really focus on more of a hinging motion than a squatting motion that's really going to build up that posterior chain in the back. Um, you're going to want to do more RDLs than conventional deadlifts unless that conventional deadlift is a sumo deadlift because, again, that wider stance is really going to target your glutes. Um, more hinged motions with lunges. So normally you hear me say to keep your torso straight up and down and then your legs are in a 90-90. In this instance, when you're doing a reverse lunge, it's okay to hinge forward and drop that chest a little bit to target more of the glute hamstring rather than the quad. Um, last but not least, you wanna make sure that you're rolling out, you're stretching your hip flexors, you're stretching your hamstrings, you're rolling out those glutes and really making sure that we have a nice, well-balanced lower body.